Giannis just dropped the most efficient 50 piece of the 21-22 season and one of the most efficient 50 pieces of all time. Serge Ibaka's first taste of Cream City has given the Deer a rim protecting and all-around inside force they'd been longing for in the absence of Brooke Lopez, signing Lindell Wigginton to a two-way for some extra perimeter defense and playmaking is seeming like a highly underrated acquisition. Milwaukee's on a decent course towards repeating, ranking third in total possessions, sixth in offensive rating, ninth in net rating, and last postseason, we saw how the Bucks were able to turn up their defense to number one. Given they picked up the former champion and chef in Ablaka, this was a very nicely handled trade deadline from GM John Horst. So we're going to delve into everything the mainstream media won't tell you about the Bucks. Right quick, just 11.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is in the description for those two platforms. From Stephen A. calling Ja Morant better than Giannis, to a man with seven NBA rings along with casuals claiming they should have never been to the finals, Milwaukee's received their fair share of discourtesy. Despite the franchise securing its first chip in half a century last year, the contempt for the Bucks' accomplishments across the NBA universe has become a stark reality. More on the well-known figures disrespectfully making a mockery of the reigning champs is coming up. We'll also look at the shocking contributions of the undrafted rookie and my fellow Canadian, Lindell Wigginton. Then, we'll get into a film room breakdown on Giannis's seventh 40-plus point game of the year. First, the trade details which made Serge Ibaka, aka Mafuzi Chef, a Milwaukee Buck. In a four-team deal with the Kings, Pistons, and Clippers, where Marvin Bagley was moved from Sacktown to Detroit, Dante DiVincenzo was moved from Milwaukee to Sacktown, and Mafuzi was dealt to Cream City, and giving up a player who started 66 games for them last season in Dante DiVincenzo couldn't have been easy. And while Serge was injury-prone during his LA Clippers tenure, before signing a two-year $19 million deal in the City of Angels, it was up north in the Six, where Air Congo stood out as a special talent. Of course, even before his time in Toronto in OKC, Iblaka was a three-time all-defensive team player and two-time blocks leader, while also participating in the dunk contest. Oklahoma City was where Ibaka made a name for himself as one of the better rim-protecting big men next to the big three of Durant, Westbrook, and Harden, Serge would leave OKC to join the Magic in 2016 and was moved from Orlando to Toronto at the 2017 NBA trade deadline in exchange for Terrence Ross. With Serge's merciless shot stuffing and floor spacing at the 4 5 spot, my Raptors made at least the conference semifinals in every year from 2017 to 2020. In their 2019 title run, Ibaka's rotations on the back end of the Raptors' defense and all-around presence as a two-way big was something the Raptors absolutely couldn't live without. What stapled his value were his finals averages against Golden State of 11 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 blocks in only 19 minutes per game. Ibaka became the first player in league history to record 1,500 blocks while simultaneously having 500 threes made, which proves He's a premier stretch big of the modern era. Who knows if Toronto would have secured the chip a few years ago if they didn't have the toughness, IQ, board getting, and of course rim protection from Serge. The man was an absolute godsend for Raps Nation during their late 2010s ascendance. Ibaka's first game in Milwaukee saw him make his first three field goals, albeit in a loss without Giannis Adetokounmpo. It was weird to see him out there with the guys he competed against so many times in the NBA playoffs. The Raptors and Bucks faced off, I believe, two or three times when Serge was in Toronto. The 32-year-old Serge logged 31 minutes in that outing against Portland and followed that up against Indiana by playing 24 minutes, scoring 9 points, and going a perfect 3 of 3 from the field. It'll be very interesting to see if Ibaka can stay healthy and potentially recapture his old Raptor self. You're about to meet a stunningly impactful young player, but first, for the details on the well-known members of the NBA universe, adding fuel to the Bucks' fire. While I've made a few videos on John Morant's Grizzlies, respecting what this kid's been doing, putting him in the same sentence as the reigning finals MVP is just ridiculous, but claiming you're an expert and then running this nonsense segment, that's- That, that, I that, that, 
That is blasphemous. That is blasphemous. Let Ja Morant keep ascending. Mm -hmm. And I might go with Ja. Giannis is Giannis, but we don't know what the hell Ja, ja gonna be. This headline of the question alone is an absolute joke, and it's not fair to both Giannis or Morant. They're both special, but Stephen A needs to know there's levels to this. Adetokounmpo's coming off a legendary run to the championship where he averaged 30, 13, and 5 on 57% shooting, scoring the most points in a finals closeout game of all time. I'm not gonna go any further with that argument. But then there was Robert Ori, a seven-time champion shooting on the wing next to the likes of Duncan, Olajuwon, Kobe, and Shaq. Ori's, of course, a respected voice among retired players. Having said that, he said this about the Bucks recently. We know Milwaukee ain't gonna go back to back because they shouldn't have been there in the first place. They only won because of a big toe, end quote. For clarity, Ori's remarks about the big toe is a reference to the Bucks series against the Nets, where if Durant's foot was behind the line, Brooklyn would have taken a one-point lead in Game 7 as opposed to the game going to OT. But it's very obvious that specific circumstances and injuries not only had an impact on the Bucks championship win, but every champion throughout the course of NBA history. It's surprising for a former player, especially one with so much title-winning experience, to say this because Robert knows deep down that if Shaquille O'Neal doesn't tap out the rebound against Sacramento, the name Ori isn't known for hitting a dagger three at the buzzer to kill Mike Bibby, Chris Webber, and company back in 02. Craziness happens, and the last team standing in any given season, regardless of the circumstances, deserves their damn respect. I've seen many underestimate the heart of a champion, I just didn't think a man who'd won seven titles would do the same thing. A film room breakdown on how Giannis manipulated Indiana's defense to the tune of a beastly 50-piece is right after this next segment. Following a two-year stint at Iowa State University, Lindell Wigington went undrafted in 2019. He then spent a year with Minnesota's G League team, the Iowa Wolves, before playing in Israel in 2020 and spending another short stint with the minor league Wolves in 2021. The most shocking fact about this man's journey is that it was less than a year ago that he signed with the Hamilton Honey Badgers of the Canadian Elite Basketball League. He'd then spend 15 games with the Bucks G League team in 2021-22, and despite making just 15% of his three-point attempts, management believed his game translated to the pros, and Wigginson officially signed a two-way contract with the Milwaukee Bucks on January 13th. Given his last two games against the Portland Trailblazers and Indiana Pacers have seen Lindell score in double figures and be a combined plus 14 by making stealthy hustle plays, like this defensive strip in the pick-and-roll right here, the 23-year-old is living up to expectations after being called up. Bucks fans, I'm interested to know your thoughts on this kid down below in the comments. One of the Greek Freaks NBA's second most 740-plus point games came on Tuesday night in the form of a dominant 50-piece. By a wide margin, it was the most efficient 50-plus point outing of the year, as Giannis shot an unheard of 81%, shooting 17 for 21 from the field. The 21 attempts were the fourth fewest in a 50-point game of all time. Watch how easy Giannis makes the timing of this block look, sticking with Jalen Smith as he tries a short pull-up, reaching out with his 7'3 wingspan and getting all ball, but he's not done there. In transition, after Bobby Portis loses the handle, he picks it up at the half court with a full head of steam, only requiring one dribble going downhill to throw it down on two pacer defenders. We've been mind boggled by those types of hops for his entire nine year career. What you aren't used to seeing from Giannis is find an open shooter with a nifty pass before relocating to the perimeter and knocking down a triple in Stephen Curry fashion like the play on your screen. Giannis is shooting 48% from three point range in February, taking around four triples per night. Along with the distance daggers, the NBA's leading scorer has steadily polished his post game, receiving the post entry from Cash on this possession. An inverted jab step doesn't fool Jalen Smith, who does a great job of staying with Giannis. However, the sophomore can't scope out this dominant drop step, which sweeps through the entire lane, giving the freak an open bucket. The flashy abilities lead to a certain percentage of his offensive prowess, but 
Don't underestimate the impact of Adetokounmpo's stick to itiveness, whether it's on the offensive glass battling for loose balls, which combined with his size allows him to feast for easy hoops down low. But way more impressively, it's how Giannis is operating when he gets defended by a smaller, yet scrappy player who can stick with him. While a younger version of Giannis would have looked to bully midgets before getting triple teamed and stripped, watch how far Adetokounmpo's game has come against Tyrese Halliburton right here. Hits him with a couple elusive jab steps, dribbles twice into the lane, stops on a dime, and you may notice he switches his pivot foot for the fadeaway, but the travel was covered up by how quick the move was in real time. Last clip we'll look at in the film room came with under two minutes to go in a single digit ball game. This nasty crossover quite literally freezes his matchup, who still does a solid job contesting the shot, but displaying the work he's put into the balance and confidence of his shooting stroke, Giannis is able to nail the clutch jumper. How would you best describe Giannis? Best answer in the comments section down below gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is John Will commenting, What impresses me the most about this four game winning streak is the fact that they're doing it without Zach Levine and three more of their top players. The Bulls are peaking at a real good time, and to be able to get this much playing time with the backup players is a bonus for the run for a championship. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. This was Deep Low, and I'll see you next video.